Hey there, it's Nathalie. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back. So I'm going to, this is part two of uh, the book binding thing. And so I have just taken the piece of chipboard off of the back of a watercolor uh, tablet. And it's, it was filled with watercolor paper, but any chipboard will do. It's just heavier and works a whole lot better. So I folded my paper in half, my copy paper in half, and I'm just allowing about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So my rule of thumb is, of course, measure twice and then cut once. And so I'm just using a little exacto knife, make sure I've got good sharp blades. I have to score through a couple of times to get it to cut through. Anyway, so I'm gonna cut two of these pieces for the front and the back, and then that little extra piece will be for the spine. Now this is really important and I learned because this is my first time to do, I've done a bunch of junk germs, but this is my first time to do a case binding. And so that little spine piece needs to be exactly the same width as your signatures when they're all stitched together and finished up. And so that's in, in part one, the video, uh, you know, beginner's book binding. And actually I'm kind of sort of a beginner too, but I, you know, I always like to take y'all along on my journey as I learn. So I bought a fat quarter from Walmart and I'm just, I just cut it in half. I'm gonna allow about an inch all the way around. And I'm gonna use some uh, matte medium to adhere this to the wrong side of this, uh, the chipboard. Now, uh, that piece of paper there is uh, the backing of shipping label, so it's a little bit resistant to the gluing. So that's what I just usually I I don't throw those away. I save those for as like a glue surface to kind of protect my other surfaces. So just a brush and then the matte medium. Get a good coat on there. I'm going to have to go back and recoat the edges just a little bit. I'm not sure whether it dried too fast or what its deal was, but it's like needed just a little touch extra, like right there, get that to where it'll stay down. And again. So then there I'm gonna glue in the spine in. And then I'm gonna leave just a little bit, maybe not quite a quarter of an inch gap between the front cover, the spine, and the back cover. Push that down and then I'm gonna glue that, repeat that process on the back with the back cover. The white paper that's right there, that's where like, I'm not worried about that. That's gonna be covered up, that piece of torn white paper. That'll be underneath. I, and I didn't wanna put it toward the fabric side because it might show through, but for the inside cover, it's going to be covered up with the with the liner. So I'm not worried about that. Putting a little bit more uh, matte medium. Uh, actually, this isn't matte medium. That's matte. It's a gel medium, so it's thicker than the regular matte medium. But it's matte gel. I think is what it's called. Then I want to clip the corners where they have just a little bit of a about a scissor width between that, that clipped edge and that chipboard. So that'll give me kind of a really pretty corner whenever I turn that in. So it's at, a, at, at an angle there. So now we need to glue the edges. We glue on the board, a little bit on the fabric itself. And especially right there as we turn the fabric over it on that, that lead edge. We'll do that on both sides. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. So the thing with whenever you're doing a project the first time, of course, it's kind of chancy for me to show you whenever I do something the first time. Uh, I did clip out a few of my mistakes, but you know, if you if you don't learn, I mean, from your mistakes, oh my gosh, you know, that's how we learn a lot of times is how not to do it. And I don't take it as failure. It's like, okay, that didn't work out. I'm going to try something different. So the top and the bottom edges of that, and then I want to press that in into those little uh, crevices kind of inside between, right there between the back and the front and that spine. Made sure I got had good glue on that so that would uh, stay down.
get those little corners kind of tucked in so they'll have a little smooth tip on the edge of the corners. Now my, my book, I had 10 signatures and they had uh, three pages each. And uh, then I read, I did another one. That's the one that I did the first time. And so I did another one that was four pages each to make the signatures just a little bit thicker. So this particular spine is designed for that. And it's just regular copy paper. Now I'm going to put a little bit of extra something, something on that spine. I don't have book cloth. Uh, I'm probably not going to do a whole lot of more of these case bound books, but I, I'm doing this for my friend Renee and so that she can have a tutorial on how to do this and have something that she can go back and watch again. We did a little bit in person, but it's like, oh man, I've slept since then. What, how did I do that? There's some really good tutorials on YouTube, of course, and some on TikTok. I'm using the matte gel to adhere this little uh, spine cover onto there. I like using the matte gel because it's not a real wet glue like the Fabri-Tac or it doesn't show through to the front. Uh, it's, and, and I did mark the center of that uh, little spine piece and I stitched it. I used to, just took it to my sewing machine and did a couple of rows of stitching around just to add a little extra something something to it. And then I'm also, I don't show this process, but I'm also going to take a little piece of the the turquoise batik fabric and glue it over the spine area on the inside uh, of the book cover. Again, I want to kind of press those down on in the middle where that bends. I think that's going to lay pretty good. Let that dry really good. And so now I want to make some, I think they're called head pieces on this. So my, my glue, my spine of my signatures has already been, has two coats of glue on it. It's dried overnight. And so now I'm just taking some little strips of fabric and I'm going to put that where it'll stick out just a tiny little bit. Now there's other, I think there's actually like real fabric that you can get or ribbon that you can get to do this. But I thought I'll just use some of this batik fabric. So I'm going to glue it to the spine and then I'm going to glue it to itself. I'm going to fold it in thirds. So there's the first one and I'm going to do a matching thing on the other end. I've already got it down and now I'm going to uh, put the glue on both of the little surfaces there and then fold it over in third. Get it kind of away from the edge of that signature. Now glue the next one. Trim it out so that there's not fabric hanging over because this is going to be hidden on the inside of this headpiece. I hope that makes sense. I say that a lot, but I hope that makes sense. Fold that in and that'll give it a, just a nice little finish. Again, do that on the other side. Just repeat that process. And now I'm going to fold it in half with just leaving a little bit out, peeking out over the end of that signature on both ends. And then we're going to let that dry really good. See, there it is. Just a little bit of peak of a fabric there. So I've got some card, and it's not cardstock, it's scrapbook paper that's the same on both sides. And so I've cut it to eight and a half by 11. So it's the same as my signatures. And I am doing it about an eighth of an inch of glue onto like the first and last page. Let's line that up. And I will tell you this, once I got this lined up and dried and I'm like, okay, I've got a little bit of white pages hanging out over, I maybe should have cut the, the end pages a little bit larger, but I thought, well, I'll we'll try to trim this up. Don't do that. I'll show you that in a little bit. So I marked the middle of this little piece of paper, and I don't know what this is technically called, but it wraps around the end papers. Not for sure what purpose it serves, but because I've seen other bookbinders do this, and sometimes they'll use like a couple of pieces of fabric, but I'm just using a piece of copy paper that's cut a little bit shorter. There's the middles. And I'm just using PVA glue for this. And that's what I used for the end pieces was PVA glue. I did not use the matte gel for that. So smooth that down. 
We're going to wrap it around the spine. Put it into the back of the into the spine part of the signatures. And that's going to cover up those ends on those uh, head pieces. I learned a lot in this process. Do that, just repeating what I did on the front, press that all down, and now it's going to be ready to uh, go into our book. But this is what I was talking about. I thought, mm, that's kind of hanging out a little bit. I think I'll trim that. But let me just tell you, you probably really need a guillotine. And I'm not talking about like, you know, like a real French Revolution guillotine. This is not the way you want to do it. I ended up with some pretty raggedy edges on this. So again, that was a learning process. I've seen other bookmakers do this, but mm, yeah, no. It was a little raggedy. So now I've got it ready to go into the cover. Okay, to, to glue the end page to the cover, I'm going to use PVA glue. It's a little bit smoother. Uh, I'll have just a little bit more time. It's a little bit wetter. Uh, and so I'm going to coat the inside, not all the way out to the edge, but pretty close. And then I'm going to put that label sheet, uh, that label backing sheet underneath that end page so that I don't get glue onto my other pages of my journal, of my book. And so get a good coat on there. And then it took me, in all honesty, it took me three or four tries. You're going to see just a couple of the tries because it's like first time doing this, take it out, lift it off, rearrange it, make sure that my spacing was right. Uh, I tried not to get frustrated with it, but this is still part of the learning process. So I would not use your treasure paper, your, your best fabrics, maybe for the first time out to try this. So I pulled it off. Put just a little bit more glue on there and then did it again. You know what? I don't know. Fifth time is charm or whatever you want to say. So now it, it looks like it's going to work pretty good like that. The size is right. So I am going to do the same process on the back side. Again, the PVA glue out almost to the edge, but far enough that I make sure that I've got my end paper stuck down there. And especially I'm putting that glue all the way to the edge on the end paper. And wrap that around. And again, I've got that little piece of label backing there to keep the pages from gluing together. So then I'm going to put it in my little book press that I made and left it overnight to dry. And I have a little bit of cracking that happened in one edge of it, but that's okay. I mean, still for a first try and I think that it'll be good for a tutorial and even for you to learn from this. Anyway, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Share me with your friends. And uh, yeah, I think that this is going to work. I think that this is going to be just fine. Bye-bye. See you next time.